You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Moore Everett versus Taylor. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Good day. Today, two people with two different mothers are here claiming the same defendant could possibly be their biological father. Oh. Mr. Moore, you claim you've known Mr. Taylor for most of your life. Yes, Your Honor. But he has never acknowledged you as a son. Yes, Your Honor. And he even left you in foster care. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Everett, you say you weren't even introduced to Mr. Taylor until you were five years old. Then you claim you didn't see him again until you were sent to live with him as a teenager. Yes, Your Honor. But you say it went so badly, you actually ended up putting yourself in foster care. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Taylor, you say you deny paternity of both plaintiffs, and you have good reason with each. That's correct, Your Honor. Now, I'm going to hear the cases separately, starting with Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore, your aunt is here, and mm. she says her testimony will change everything in this case. But first, how did you end up in foster care? I ended up in foster care because he let me rot in foster care. He didn't care about oh. nothing about me. Uh, that is a strong, strong accusation. Please describe your childhood. How did this happen? I, I went to juvenile hall because my mom, my mom was addicted to drugs. Wow. So when I got out of ju when I was in juvenile hall at the age 14, my mom came in there to tell me that Mr. Teller was my dad. Mm -hmm. So I walked out on her because I was upset because why are you telling me this now? Right. Like, and he, he wasn't never there for me. And now you're telling me that this is my dad. So then I get sent to foster care and he never came and got me. I think that if he was there for me, I would be a better person than what I am now. I can't even read or write or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And if he you're was there for me to help me out, he would do it. You said you can't read or write? Is that No, I can't read or write or nothing. Because, because I didn't have a father. Because you drop out of school? No, because I didn't have a father or mother in my life. I didn't have neither one. I had to take care of my, my little brother and my older brother. <sighs> that's, that's just so very sad. Mr. Taylor, do you hear what Mr. Moore is saying? I do, Your Honor. And what is your response? I wasn't sure ever that this was my son. You still can't I find out. I honestly though. didn't know. And then all of a sudden, he's your son, he's your son, he's your son. No, Your Honor, I didn't know. So I went and I, I, I did a little investigating, and I do have right here a birth certificate that my name's not even on it. You Jerome, know, let me his see that evidence, please. Because I had another dad. Because my brother and them's dad was the dad that I that I had to that I had was raised up with. Mr. Taylor, I have to say though, if you knew there was a possibility that he was your son, why wouldn't you go get him out of foster care or at least start some type of proceeding <laughs> and, and, yeah, uh, to be able to determine? Excuse me, I never went to court for no child support. I was always in doubt. Uh, his mother, God rest her soul, very promiscuous. It was really confusing. And so That's this evidence that you presented, you say further, validates. Convince me. Excuse me, Your Honor, I got evidence too that me and this man look exactly alike. We I'd like to exactly see your alike. evidence, We've been sir. looking exactly alike since we was babies. Did you bring that evidence, uh, Yes, sir? Your Honor, can I pre present this to you? We got the same chin, same nose, same mouth, same eyes, same head structure, all that. On the left, of course, is a picture of you, and on the right, a picture of Mr. Taylor. Yes, ma'am. And you see a striking resemblance. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Taylor, do you see the resemblance? I see a resemblance as far as us being the same complexion. Mr. Taylor, what did his mother say to you? What did his she mother... tell you? said to me, now this is years later. This isn't when the child was born. This is your, that might be your son. Were you ever told she was even pregnant? She came and told me she was living with me. She left and she went back to her man or whoever she was, the relationship she had. About a month later, she says, you know I'm pregnant. Yeah, and? You know what I mean? You done went back with the guy that you left to be with me. Now you're back with him. Now you're coming back and you're telling me that you're pregnant? 
if he knew that I wasn't a biological child, my mom told him, because my mom would not lie to me and tell me in jail. She told me in jail that he was my dad. And, and then I get locked up and my mom comes to me and tells me, oh, this, um, Gregory Teller is your dad. But in jail, time, I but walked she, out on her. But she don't come back, she came back to me and told me, that's not your son. So, Mr. Moore, you're saying as you're lost out here in these streets, you're doing things young men um, shouldn't have yes. to do, you are longing for a father figure. Yes, yes, and I don't have one of those. So now that I got my kids, I take, I make sure that I'm their father figure. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you should do. I'd like to go to your witness now, if I may. Ma'am, yes. Ms. Twyman, yes. please tell us what you know about this situation, Mr. Moore's upbringing, and how can you add? Mr. Moore's mother is my sister. Okay. Okay. My sister told me that Mr. Taylor could not be the father of Mr. Moore. Literally out of her mouth. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. And she told you this in what context? Because I guess when she got pregnant, she was also sleeping with other gentlemen. She's always done that. And also, I've seen gentlemen come out of her house. Why would your sister, at the position this young man was in, go to him and tell him, Mr. Taylor is your biological father? I can't speak on that. You I don't know why? I wasn't there when she told him that. Well, the only way we can move forward is to have the result. Jerome, the envelope. We will get to the second part of this case in just a moment. Mm -hmm. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Moore Everett versus Taylor, pertaining to 31-year-old Eugene Moore, and as to whether Mr. Taylor is his biological father, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Taylor, you are his father. <laughs> Mr. Taylor, I can see you have tears in your eyes. What are you feeling right now? I'm feeling that I finally know, instead of doubting for all these years, 31 years old. I could have been in his life so much earlier if I wouldn't have let situations and people talking to me interfere with what I had to do as far as being a father. I want to try my best to make it up as best as I can. Would you like to give your son a hug? I sure would. So I think it's time we move on to the second part of this case. <clears throat> Ma'am, please explain to the court what was life like for you growing up? I never had a father um, figure in my life. I didn't meet Mr. Taylor until I was five years old. He came to my house in Philadelphia. I came outside, my mom was like, Somebody wants to meet you. Your dad wants to meet you. I said, my dad, he was like, yeah. So when I went to the car, he was like, I'm your dad. And he said, um, oh, I'll be back to see you again. I never seen him again until I was 14. Until when my mother sent me. Mr. Taylor, I, do you I remember always, this? I remember it vividly. I doubted her from the beginning. The way that I met her mother, the relationship that I had with her mother, which was a very brief relationship. Uh, to begin with, let me explain in the beginning. The mother, her mother, lived with me for a month. She left, and I didn't see her no more, and then the next time you see me, you got a baby and you saying it's mine. And right after that, I was incarcerated. I was gone for five years. Okay, can I When I, I came home... Yes. 
in just, just one moment, yeah. ma'am, what I, I want to understand from you, sir, is when she was five years old, you still had doubts, the same doubts you had when you saw her when you were a baby. That's correct. Because was this relationship with her mother exclusive or were you aware? No, it wasn't exclusive at Did all. Did you know if her mother was sleeping with no, other I people? I knew her mother was sleeping with others. Yeah. How you did know you know, know I mean? that? I know that because friends of mine, long story short, after I met her mother and she stayed with me for that month, I was getting all kinds of feedback from my friends, from people I knew. Oh, you dealing with her now? You know about her? You know what's up with her? They were kind of like laughing at me for even dealing with her because they knew how promiscuous she was. And then the next thing you know, I'm tagged with this child. I don't know nothing about it. I go to jail, I come out of jail. She's five years old. I go past to see the mom. She tells me, this is your daughter. Okay, for these five years, were you aware, made aware, anything about him? All Nothing. I knew is I, it was a man named Greg. I didn't have a father, a, a, a daughter and father relationship. I didn't go to amusement parks when my friends went to amusement parks. I didn't go to parks. I didn't go to family reunions. I didn't go to no type of anything. He was nowhere in the picture. Your Honor, from five the to fourteen years old. I wasn't in the picture is because I had all the doubts that I had as far as the mother's. And concerned. so when when this next encounter happened at fourteen, right? What happened? I was sent on a Greyhound bus to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. My grandfather, well, his father gave me his number. I called him and said I'm at the bus station. He came and picked me up from the bus station, took me to the same woman's house with his daughter, treated me, neglected me, didn't enroll me at school. No, Enroll no. me at school, didn't buy me school clothes, he didn't Look. buy me sneakers, he didn't buy me school supplies, he didn't buy Your me Honor, food. She was, and at times, she, Your Honor, she was in food. high school, we didn't and she turns food. around, every they five eat. minutes, I'm going, I go up to the school, she's playing hooky. So why is it you decided to take this girl in she at age have... 14? I cared. I wanted to reach out. They said that this was my child. She takes and calls me on the phone. I'm at the bus station. I'm not gonna leave her at the bus station. I'm so, not gonna so do that. So when she called to, wait a minute. When she called to say I'm at the bus station, did you know she was coming? No. What? No. The next thing I know, here she is. I got to enroll her in school. As soon as she got there, I could see why she came. She was disruptive. She tore my household apart. She was playing hooky from school. She was staying out all night. And right after this year that she was there, when she goes back, she's pregnant. I'm up there saying to myself, now this is my child, so she say. So her mother say, so I take and go, and I take and look out for this child the way I do. And then she's going to turn around and say some craziness like that when I stuck up for her? I know why you're so passionate. It's 25 years later. Right. And look, I feel your pain. He's on my birth certificate, but when I went to go get my birth certificate, it was two people on the birth certificate. When I took that, that to the state building, the state building said to me that it was a computer error. So, a computer wait a error, nothing. Wait, there's two people <laughs> on your birth certificate? There was two people at the time. It was just a word named Michael on a birth certificate under Gregory Taylor. So, do you have that birth certificate When copy? I went to apply for my birth certificate again, they said that they, I, the, the, um, the system's changed in Philadelphia. So, you got to apply for it, then you got to go back and pick it up. They don't do it same day thing. So, that's why I don't have the birth certificate with me today. But Have you I, ever I seen this birth of, certificate? I've never seen it. I don't know nothing about it. I don't know. I know that my name shouldn't be on it. What simply behind the it? fact that she had a selection of people she could have put on it. Well, and I'm just being honest it. about that. And it's not that I'm disrespecting her mother. I'm just telling you how her mother was. The only born. way to figure out whose name should rightfully be on that birth certificate is to get the results. Jerome, That's I'm right. ready. Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. 
Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. In the case of Moore Everett v. Taylor, pertaining to 43-year-old Naya Everett, and as to whether Mr. Taylor is her biological father, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Taylor, you are her father. Have a hope. Sure. Yeah. Dad, you got your hands full with your little girl. <laughs> but you know what? You're a man that has lived a long life of experience, life lessons. Mm -hmm. Just do the work because Honestly, you can fulfill for both of these. Young man, please stand up. Alongside your sister. And I do have a beautiful bride. Love yes, you do. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, my day is complete. I have gotten a smile out of the beautiful Miss Everett. <laughs> I'm so very happy for you. This court has resources for you to help you begin to work through this. We want you to take advantage of it. And I wish you all the very, very best of luck. Thank you, Rob. Court is adjourned. Thank you all. Will you bring up Ms. Moore and Mr. Everett, please? I want you all to know, in this courtroom, even though we have beautiful endings like we've had today, yes. you all are adults now. Yes. So you know that happy endings take work in real life. They don't yes, happen they do. like fairy tales. That's you it. gotta do the work and your dad's gotta do the work. We gonna hold him to it. But I want you guys to do some work too. And Mr. Moore, for you, I have a literacy program that I want you to be a part of, because I want you to be able to take your life to the next level in every capacity. I'm so happy for Thank you. Thank you, okay. So Appreciate happy for you guys. You. All right, good luck to you. Thank you, Thank you. Okay. Okay.